Uh, good morning, church. Uh, happy Sabbath. Uh, we're going to have the health nugget, a small talk for 10 minutes. Uh, let us pray before we start. Our Father, who art in heaven, we thank you for this blessed morning that you've given us. We glorify your name, for you are from everlasting to everlasting. And we thank you for the opportunity to come into your fellowship this morning. As we look into matters pertaining to our health, matters of public health concern, how I pray that whatever little we may share shall be of use and of purpose to someone in this congregation or even beyond. We thank you and seek your face even as we continue with the day service that indeed we shall experience your goodness because we are prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning, okay, my name is uh, Rael Mutai. I'm a member of this church. And uh, this morning, I just want to make a, a brief presentation on the topic of drugs and other addictions. Yeah, 10 minutes is a short time, and I'm just going to give an overview so that we have some basic ideas that can help us when dealing with these matters because they are there, they are part of our lives, and it happens every day. We've encountered people who are struggling with drugs and other addiction, and it will be good to have some key points which we can look at. So the outline of the presentation, first uh, I will go through the objectives of the presentation and briefly on what it is, what drugs are, how addiction comes into existence, why people uh, take drugs, what are the global statistics saying, what do you do if you think or suspect that your child or a loved one is taking drugs, how about other addictions and eventually conclusions or what message we can take home. So the objectives of this session, basically we just want to underscore the dangers of drugs and other addictions because these things are dangerous and that is why we are talking about them. Secondly, you will also say something about how this affects our lives so that once drugs are being used by somebody, their lives generally becomes chaotic and decadent, and that basically ruins their potentials and opportunities. And uh, how then do we prevent this curse, and what treatment options are there, and what is the role of the family, what is the role of friends, what is the role of the community, what is the role of country, and what is the global community doing to uh, deal with this issue. So. Um, what we know in, in terms of drugs and the modern age, in the times in which we live, people are taking alcohol, they are taking tobacco, they are taking many drugs. Why? To satisfy their passions or to escape reality. And secondly is that drugs have been moved. They are no longer being used for medical, for pharmaceutical reasons, but instead they are being used for recreational purposes. And by taking them for recreational purposes, people are hoping that they, can, uh, that they can find some spiritual healing. And this is how they become ensnared. You get caught because you have a void and emptiness somewhere. And you start taking the drugs in the hope that it will deal with that and maybe spiritually lift you up. But in the process, that is how you get into the circle of drug addiction. There are many drugs available out there. Uh, this presentation will not dwell into the pharmaceuticals about drugs and how they are. But maybe broadly, what we can say is that a drug is any substance which can be in form of food, a drink, a capsule, it can be in form of smoke. When, and when this is taken into the body by whatever, uh, through whatever mechanism, it alters uh, the nervous system. So these things are called psychoactive substances because the, uh, the part of you that it attacks is your psyche. So they are called psychoactive substances. And these psychoactive substances are broadly uh, classified into what are called stimulants. They are depressants, they are hallucinogens, they are inhalants, they are steroids. So when you hear of somebody taking heroin, cocaine, somebody taking marijuana, somebody taking alcohol, and other LST and other drugs, they are not the same. They work differently, but the net effect is to help people deal with their void, their emptiness, address a certain passion, or in the hope of being lifted to a higher standard than where they are. So somebody has something that they are trying to address. But then, so what happens when you take this? The basic process of addiction. So what we know is that the first time that someone takes a drug, it's usually unpleasant, even if it's alcohol. For most those who have tried, they know that the first time they take it, it is not pleasant. Smoking marijuana the first time is not pleasant. Smoking cigarette the first time is not pleasant. But when you repeat it, 
when you a pleasing psychological effect starts to take place and that's, that is how psychological dependence comes into being so that the person now starts to feel good when they take the drug and they feel bad when they do not take it and so the user now slowly becomes an addict meaning that they require it for them to feel good, to be functional, to be able to ad address the daily things. So drugs generally uh, generate addiction. Any use is inappropriate. And no matter how small, you cannot say I'm just smoking one joint of marijuana or I'm just smoking three and therefore it is not a lot. It doesn't matter. However small it is, however infrequent you are taking it, as long as you are taking it, you are standing on the edge. You are setting yourself, putting yourself at risk of going into dependence and addiction for that particular drug. So when do we say that somebody is drug dependent? We say that somebody is drug dependent when they start giving preference to the use of the drug over other behaviors that were previously considered to be more important. For instance, a student, instead of going to class, instead of studying, they are spending more time, you know, drinking, you know, or using one of those drugs. Now it kind of overtakes uh, their life. So that their life now is about how to get the drug, how to use it, and to feel the effects, you know. And no, normally most of the time the effect is to black out or something like that. So we know that drugs foster two types of dependence when you take it. There is the physical dependence and there is the psychological dependence. And the physical dependence is what is, is conquered through detoxification. When people go to rehabilitation, they are subjected to detoxification. And the physical aspect of it, that, that withdrawal symptom, wanting to go and take the drug when the, the dose in the blood system goes, goes low, is dealt with. But the most difficult bit is the psychological dependence because then this person needs to change their lifestyle, needs to change their circumstances, needs to perhaps even move away from that substance. So even as we think of uh, rehabilitation, sometimes people go to rehab, they come back, and then in a short while you find the person has relapsed. And everybody is asking, well, what happened? You know, they stayed for six months. Why? What has happened? It is possible that uh, the program did not address the psychological dependence element. So there are many reasons why people de take drugs, but some of them is because they want to feel better, they want to increase their self-esteem, they want to widen their conscience. You know, it is generally stimulating, they want to release tension, and others are just doing it out of curiosity. But there are other sociocultural factors that include drug availability. You stay in an environment where people are just using drugs, and therefore it is readily available, and there is that temptation to just to try. Other people are not just informed, and that is part of this re the reason why we are having this presentation, so that you are aware that these things are there in the community in which we live, but you cannot afford to be ignorant, especially in the times in which we live. You need to be educated as a parent to be able to guide your household. We need to be educated as a church community so that we are the light in the places where we live, in the interactions that we have. There is the issue of peer pressure for the young people. And it's not just young people. Even some adults still start taking drugs because their friends are taking. So you will be surprised that somebody who is 30 years old, they didn't take drugs all along, but now they are 30 years they have gotten a job somewhere, they are just hanging out with their friends, and because everybody else is taking something, they also join in and start taking, and that is how they get uh, hooked into it. So what we are saying is that there are many signs that would give you an idea as a parent that perhaps your child could be taking drugs, and some of them include uh, an explained change in personality or attitude, mood swings, irritability, uh, drowsiness, lack of coordination, problems concentrating, involuntary eye movements, lack of inhibition. Somebody who was just very introverted so suddenly is very talkative and is very bold, saying things that would not, they would not say routinely. But now they are very bold. They have no inhibition. They can say anything in the presence of anyone. So those, those could be telltale signs, and therefore you need to follow up and find out if indeed they are using something. But then, when, if you should then confirm that um, if you suspect the, 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 what um, 
If you suspect that your child or a relative or somebody is taking these drugs, especially for children, what uh, we are advising parents is that one, you have to take time to speak openly to him or her about it. And of course, you are talking to them in a warm attitude, not an accusatory tone. You want to find out, is it really true what they could be doing? And if in the process you confirm, then you have to show, you, continue, you have to show love. You have to make your child realize that you know, it is, you don't hate them because of what they've started doing, but you're concerned about the consequences of what, what those things are doing to them. It is harming their life. It is going to have long-term implications, and that is your concern. Uh, thirdly, you need to reflect on the motives. Why is your child doing this? Why is you, a child who was just, you know, functioning normally, going about normal activities? What is it that has motivated them to get involved in this? And then you need to seek ex an expert of, uh, help in terms of mental health experts because it is not a matter that you are just going to manage in your house. You need the services of an expert to handle it. You need also to reach out to the friends of your child because all children are friends. You need to know what is happening, not because you want to accuse those other children, but you need um, a peer support and perhaps to have a joint effort in dealing with the problem because if your child is using, there is also a good chance those other children are using. So reach out to them and then uh, you, you are supposed to incentivize the, your child to reinforce their willingness to change. You know, if they do make a step uh, in terms of getting away from those drugs, you incentivize. And as a parent, you need to remain firm in this, uh, in this process. You need to seek the possibility of a rehabilitation program uh, be careful how you are giving money to your child because drugs are sustained on money. You know, unless somebody has money, they cannot access drugs. So if you, you suspect your child is already using drugs, then you need to be careful about the allowances that you are giving them to be sure that now the normal allowances that they were supposed to, buy, to use for normal activities of life is supporting that lifestyle. But of course, we know above all, you need uh, to seek divine intervention because this has worked because there is place for spiritual uh, intervention, there is place for prayer in addressing this. Now, apart from the drugs, we live in a time where there are many other addictions. And these many other addictions, unfortunately, reinforce the drug addictions. So you may say, well, I do not take alcohol, I do not smoke marijuana, I do not have access to those hard drugs. But you are the person who is addicted to the internet. Your child just, uh, yourself, you know, when you are not cooking, you are just on your phone, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on all these things. Even that is a form of addiction. I need to, you need to think about it. We don't just look at it in terms of drugs. There are people who are workaholics. That is a form of addiction. You know, you are doing, you are doing that to earn a living, to sustain your family, to sustain yourself, and you're even contributing to the church. But when it takes over your life, then it has to be managed also. You cannot be a workaholic. When you start just putting all your time into work and ignore all other aspects of your life, then you are living an imbalanced life and there will be consequences, first of, of them being burnout and other consequences. There are also people who are uh, addicted to sex. There are people who are addicted to gambling and gaming. And these things go also with other drugs, alcohol and other drugs. They, they are not just sustained on their own. Others are addicted to food, to addiction, to, the, to their cell phones and the like. So the important thing to note is that addictions tend to reinforce each other. One person could not be addicted to one thing, but they are doing another. But chances are that you start one addiction and it takes you to the other addiction. So that people are shuttling between drug and non-drug addictions. Um, uh, what we know is that, uh, of course, from the public health perspective, the issue here is that we need to be aware as a church community, we need to be aware as family members, we need to be aware as parents that drugs are in our communities, children and young people are daily being uh, 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 getting hooked into it and therefore we need to, to discuss these things so that we are aware and we are taking relevant action. We need to also involve the young people. Parents alone cannot talk about drugs without involving their children. We need to promote prevention and treatment options for those who have gone into these things. In other words, it is possible that somebody could have already been overtaken and the fact that they have been overtaken does not mean it is the end of life. There is room for the person to be rehabilitated and to be able to have a meaningful uh, life. And um, so in conclusion, what I want to say is that 
There is so much about drugs in the world. Currently, in fact, in 2021, the UNODC gave a report on the state of drug and drug abuse in the world. And they say 275 million people were using drugs. It may look like a small proportion because, of course, the population of the world is 7.8 billion people. If 275 million were using drugs, you know, you may calculate and say, well, it's a small proportion. But when that person is your sister, when that person is your brother, your husband, or your child, then you will see that it is quite significant. The consequences can be quite dire. And uh, even at the, in that report, they also say that during COVID, many more people got into drug addiction. And I think we, we could almost see the evidence. There was so much alcohol drinking around, another drug abuse, because people were not going to work, people were locked up. And for many reasons, people were just, you know, slowly just got attracted into drugs. And at the same time, drugs like uh, marijuana, which we know that it is a banned substances. It seems that the way it is prepared, the concentration levels have been going up over time. But unfortunately, adolescents and young people do not perceive it as a serious thing. In fact, they say their perception went down by 40%. In other words, from the previous year, and 40% of those who had been sampled said they didn't think it was a big deal, that you know, smoking weed was just okay. Uh, so in conclusion, what we are saying is that addiction is there and it is reversible, we can do something about it. Secondly, there is scientific evidence to support the value of spirituality. Involvement in church, spiritual and religious activities have been found to really help people to keep off uh, drugs and drug addiction. And there is power in prayer. We must trust that even if it, somebody has been overtaken, apart from taking up the public health measures, they need to be prayed for and out of it they come. And once they, somebody has, has, has been involved and they have been going through rehabilitation, it's my prayer that they can also participate effectively in other activities because they need to be psychologically, you know, kept busy so that they, do, they are not idling around and looking for something to do. The void that is they were feeling should be, should be filled by the role of the church. Engage these people, engage the young people effectively by relevant social activities, events, and things that are productive so that they do not relapse into drugs. So I wish to thank you for the opportunity to share these words but I look forward to another opportunity so that we can have elaborate conversations on how to deal with drugs in our community because it's a reality that we have to deal with. Thank you and God bless you.